Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Notify Channel. When you hear North Natuna Sea, what's the first thing that pops into your head? If you're like most folks, you're probably thinking about the Indonesia-China conflict that's always making headlines. But here's the thing, it's not just about China and Indonesia. Vietnam is also a key player in this drama. And the fact that Indonesia and Vietnam haven't reached a clear agreement about this sea is a big deal. Why? Well, this area is pretty important, both for military strategy and natural resources. Now, this conflict between Indonesia and Vietnam isn't something we can just brush off. Especially when you consider that Vietnam, with its impressive military power, has its eyes on Indonesia. Naturally, this makes us want to dig a little deeper into what Vietnam's military is all about. Let's talk money first off. Let's talk about the money side of things. Vietnam's military budget is a whopping $6.2 billion. Now, when you compare this to Vietnam's gross domestic product, GDP, of $366.1 billion, it's clear that military spending is just a tiny slice of the pie, about 1.69% of its GDP. So, there's definitely room for Vietnam to pump more money into their military if they want to. But here's where it gets interesting. When you compare Vietnam's military budget to its neighbor Indonesia, it's a bit of a David and Goliath situation. Indonesia's military spending is a hefty $8.8 .8 billion, making it the big spender in Southeast Asia. But here's the kicker. A big budget doesn't always mean a better military. Take Singapore, for instance. It's fourth in Southeast Asia, but its military budget is even bigger, at about $13 billion. Now, let's shift gears and talk about the people who make up Vietnam's military. The stats show that Vietnam has a pretty impressive 3.01 million military personnel. This includes 470,000 active personnel, 2.5 million reserve personnel, and 40,000 paramilitary personnel. When you consider Vietnam's total population of 103.8 million, this means that nearly 3% of its people are in the military. That's a pretty big deal, especially when you realize that Vietnam, despite having a smaller population than Indonesia's 277 million, has more military personnel. Indonesia's military personnel only total around 1.08 million. This really shows how much Vietnam values its military. In fact, they still have mandatory military service for all citizens aged 18 to 25. All right, so we've had a good chat about the financials and the personnel, but what about the gear? What's Vietnam packing when it comes to defense equipment? Like its Southeast Asian neighbors, Vietnam is seriously invested in defense equipment across all branches, the Army, Navy, and Air Force. Let's break it down. Starting with the Army. They're packing some serious heat with three 14 tanks, 12,008 armored vehicles, 567 artillery launchers, and 63 rocket launchers. And here's the real kicker. Most of Vietnam's defense equipment isn't just any old gear, it's top-tier, best-in-class stuff. Take their tanks, for instance. Vietnam's rolling with the T-90S tank from Russia, which they snapped up in 2019. This isn't just any tank, it's a third-gen tank kitted out with a 2A46 smoothbore cannon and the 1A45T fire control system. This beast can nail targets up to 3.7 miles away in just 17.5 seconds. Yeah, you heard that right, it can obliterate a target in less time than it takes to microwave popcorn. That's some serious firepower. And then there's the Hwasong-8 missile from North Korea. This isn't just any missile, it's a tactical ballistic missile launcher that can cover a whopping 372 miles at a speed of 1.06 miles per second. If launched from Vietnam's capital, Hanoi, it could easily reach Hong Kong. It's almost like Vietnam's flexing its muscles at China with these missiles despite both being communist countries. Next up, let's take a gander at Vietnam's air defense. They're flying high with 78 fighter jets, 202 support aircraft, and 191 helicopters. And here's a fun fact. 
Vietnam has a serious crush on Russian-made fighter jets. They're rocking the Su-27 and Su-30 from Russia. The Su-27 isn't just any fighter aircraft. It's a multi-maneuver fighter aircraft that can hit speeds of 1553 miles per hour and cover a distance of 2192 miles. It's armed with the Gryazev Shipunov GSH-31 automatic cannon and comes with 10 rocket launchers, missiles, and cluster bombs for all sorts of missions. The Su-30, on the other hand, is a multi-role fighter aircraft and one of Russia's most advanced military technologies. Each unit costs a cool USD dollar 46 million, and Vietnam has 35 of them. That's a whopping total of USD $2.20 billion. Vietnam's clearly not messing around when it comes to making a name for itself in Asia. Last but not least, let's dive into Vietnam's Navy. They've got 10 frigates, 21 corvettes, four submarines, 202 patrol boats, and 13 minesweepers. And guess what? Vietnam's love affair with Russian gear extends to its Navy too. All their submarines are Kilo class, made by Russia in 1980. Each Kilo class submarine costs a staggering $250 million. These subs are armed to the teeth with eight air defense systems, including Srela 3 and Igla 1, and six torpedo tubes carrying 533 mm diameter ASW 53, 65 torpedoes. These torpedoes can hit speeds of 51 miles per hour and cover a distance of 13.6 miles. If one of these subs launched a torpedo in the North Natuna Sea, it could easily reach the Indonesian coast. Given all this, it's no surprise that Vietnam ranks second as the strongest country in Southeast Asia. It's clear that Vietnam is not just playing around, they're making strategic investments and decisions to ensure their military strength. It's a bit like a high-stakes game of chess, with each move carefully calculated to maximize their position. And it's not just about the present. Vietnam's military investments also speak volumes about their future ambitions. They're not just looking to defend their current territory. They're looking to assert their presence and influence in the region. It's a bold strategy, and it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out in the coming years. But let's not forget the human element in all of this. Behind all these numbers and stats are real people, the men and women who serve in Vietnam's military. They're the ones on the front lines, putting their lives on the line to protect their country. It's a huge responsibility, and it's one they take very seriously. And then there's the impact on the region. The North Natuna Sea isn't just a body of water, it's a crucial area that affects the lives of millions of people. It's a source of livelihood for many, and its future will have a significant impact on the region's economy and stability. So here's hoping that Indonesia and Vietnam can find some common ground over the North Natuna Sea. It's not just about military might, it's about finding a way to coexist peacefully and create a prosperous future for the people in the region. That's all we've got for this video. It's been a fascinating deep dive into Vietnam's military, and we hope you found it as interesting as we have. Can't wait to catch up with you in the next one.